Today I'm using infrared light and DigiKey's feedback devices to control the trains on my N-gauge model railway. How hard can that be? Okay, so today we're going to be having a look at uh, some of these. Um, now, this is a piece of electronics uh, that I've bought off uh, eBay again. Um, uh, they come, <laughs> they seem to cover this sort of in a roll like this. I, I've got about 20 of them or something. Um, but uh, if we open this up, Okay, so this is a, a tiny little device. Um, it's got on it an infrared LED, that's the clear one, uh, a photodiode um, with an infrared filter on it, so that will only respond to infrared light. Um, there's a small potentiometer, a photoresistor, a couple of LEDs, uh, and uh, a a three pin sort of connector on the back there. Um, and the idea of this is that the uh, the infrared LED lights up and emits infrared light in that direction. Um, and then uh, that then reflects off a surface, goes back to the, um, the photodiode uh, and it enables this device to detect whether there is an object uh, near it. And I assume you, you can adjust the potentiometer to adjust sensitivity so you can set it to detect something at a certain distance. Now, I'm told it takes uh, between three and a half and five volts. So I've got a three and a half volt supply and a five volt supply. So we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and these three pins here, it, they are marked um, uh, VCC plus. So I assume that there'll be the five, three and a half volts or the five volts ground, which will be a zero um, and out. And I'm assuming out uh, varies between three and a half and or whatever it is. Uh, five volts, three and a half volts, and 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 ground, depending on whether uh, it's detecting uh, an object in front of it or not. And what I'm hoping to do is to embed these under my baseboard and drill a couple of holes under the track. Um, so this will be pointing, poking up, but just uh, just at the sleeper level, so you you won't really be able to see it. And then when a train comes over the top, it'll be able to detect that the train's there. Um, and so I can use this uh, to provide feedback to uh, over the loco net bus or whatever uh, back to uh, a computer running some software and the computer will then know whether there's a train in a particular place. Um, now, I know for my, uh, for my feedback, um, I, I've already shown you in a previous video, which I'll put over there. Um, be providing feedback using current detection. It detects whether there's a, a train in a particular block drawing current. And that's useful, that's fine. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping I can use these to detect when there's a train in a particular place um, on the track and so I can get the trains to stop, for example, at the end of sidings or um, in my terminus station in just the right place. So I need to have a go with this. Um, so the first thing I need is my power supply. I've got my power supply here. I'm making another video uh, about this. I don't know whether I'll have published it yet or it'll be the next one. Um, but uh, anyway, I'll provide a, another card so you can link to me talking about this device. Um, but uh, for now, let's just not worry about it too much. Um, if I turn it on. And uh, here I've got myself a, a connector. I cut this off the end of a fan uh, off the inside of a computer. Um, so let me just plug it in and see what happens. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that, uh, that seems to be working in as much as there's, there's two LED lights have come on. 
Um, now, I believe one of these indicates that it's working, and the other one indicates that there's a. Um, oh, there we go. That went a bit different then. Um, indicates that there's an object there, but it, I might need to adjust the potentiometer to get it working. Uh, so let me go and get a screwdriver so I can do that. Okay, so I've got my precision uh, screwdriver set here. If I get myself a, a sort of medium sized one, that's going to work, I think. Um, and I'll just give this a bit of a fiddle. Uh, there we go, so that's gone off. And if I move my hand close to it, uh, there we go, when it gets to within that distance, it goes on. When it comes away, it goes off. So that's good. I'm pretty sure I can use these devices to detect the underside of trains. Now, I think the only problem with using this under trains is that uh, the underneath of trains is generally painted black. Black doesn't reflect uh, light very well. So if I take my, my phone case here, which is black, if I move this close, you see even up there, it's still not reflecting. Whereas if I use this uh, packet, which is white, then it does detect it. Um, so I think the worst case scenario is I might have to put a bit of white paint underneath my, my trains I want to detect, um, but that won't be the end of the world. Um, and you won't be able to see it um, when you're viewing the layout because you don't normally see the actual underneath of the chassis. So these are, you can find these on eBay. Um, if you search for infrared proximity detector, you'll find something uh, like this. I think you can get you can get five of these for a couple of pounds. I mean, they're, they're really, on, they're nothing. So there's a couple of other problems I've got. Um, I need to work out how to stick these up through the track. And I think to do that, I might find myself actually unsoldering the... Uh, the LED and the photo detector and uh, putting putting some wires on them um, because that will at least enable me um, to position them just right. don't know how well it will work if these are how far away these are separated but ideally they want to stick up between the sleepers. It's also because I, this might work nicely for double O but because I'm modeling N-Gage I think these are a bit too big to fit between the sleepers. Um, so I could drill holes sort of through the damage the sleepers in order to get these in, but that wouldn't look great. Or I could try and replace these with smaller components. Um, I think there's a bit of risk to that in as much as whether it's they're the same sort of light output and so on. The other problems I've got is how do I, you know, what do I do about connectors? I can't go robbing old computers, so you know, I need to get a proper connector somehow if I've got lots of these to connect up. Now, I've got my meter here, so let me just see if I set it to DC voltage. Um, so at the moment, the light is off. There's nothing in front of the detector, so I would expect the output to be at the ground voltage. That looks like that's giving me three, three point three. So it looks like when there's nothing there, it's actually at uh, three. And then maybe if I put something in front of it, there we go, to make it come on. If I now check the output voltage, and that's giving me a few millivolts. So what I'm hoping to do is to wire, connect this up to um, a feedback device that will turn it into a uh, loco net feedback, uh, and then I can detect it at the computer. So I've got a couple of things to do. Um, the first is to see what I can do about embedding these in the track. And the second is to how I can connect this wire up to provide feedback to the computer. I think I'll have a go at the track first. 
So I've decided I need, a, need a, a sort of bit of test track in order to try out a few different ways of fitting uh, these uh, infrared uh, sensors to the track. Um, so I've got myself a, a short length of scrap in MDF and I've put a piece of cork on it um, because that's the way I lay my track. And uh, I've got a little scrap uh, piece of track. So I will just pop that on there um, and I'll, I'll copy the exit down and then I've got something to start making holes uh, in, see how I get on. Everyone's uh, got their own way of laying track, um, so I wouldn't want to tell anyone that the way I do it's better than to any other way. I have actually made a few videos on uh, me trying to figure out ways of laying track. Um, so I'll put a I'll put a link up wherever it is there or there, so you can have a look at that. Um, but I use copy decks. Uh, Chadwick Charlie, um, Chadwick Model Railway channel uh, suggests you use copy decks, so uh, that's what I did. Wow, it smells terrible this stuff. Anyway, um, the good thing about it is that you can you can pull the track back off uh, without damaging it. I think the bad thing about it is it does have a little bit of give in it. Um, so if you uh, if you lay your track on corners. Particularly if you're joining the track on a on a bend, um, it does sort of track tries to straighten out. And if you're only holding it down with copy decks, the copy deck sort of gives a bit. Um, actually, I I went through a whole process of learning how to join uh, track on corners, um, and I managed to managed to join flexible track on a nine inch corner. I got a video on that. I'll put a link up for that. Whether it is left or right. Hold it down with copy decks. Basically involves pre-bending the rails uh, on the point where they join. Anyway, there we go. So let's uh, glue the track down. Um, I suppose I should put something heavy on it. Uh, there we go. Put a, a jar of salsa on it while it dries. So once that's ready, uh, next bit will be to try and make some holes um, and get my sensor embedded in it somehow. Okay, so I've got my uh, my piece of track now. It's glued to the cork that's glued to the three uh, the six millimeter MDF uh, subroad bed. So this is my test piece of track, um, and I need to find a way of mounting uh, my little. Uh, proximity detection device um, with infrared LED and an infrared photodiode. Um, so what I want to do is to stick it up from underneath, um, which means I'm going to need to make some holes in uh, in the subroad bed um, and hopefully get these to poke up between the sleepers or, or something. Um, so I've got my drill. I've got a, a set of drill bits of different sizes. I think I'm just going to start making some holes and see how I go. These are photodiodes and LEDs. I, in theory, they're five millimeters across, so I should need a five millimeter drill bit. Um, and I think that's a little bit more than the gap between these sleepers. So we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I think before I go and just shove a big hole through there, um, I think I'll drill some smaller holes first. Um, just to mark the position uh, and then progressively make them larger and see how we go. And I think I'll, I'll probably try and put the detector here and then I can serve another go and have several attempts at this. So this is where I need to be careful not to uh, drill a hole in my table, which would be a shame. But the sort of thing that I do. Now, there's a question as to how far apart these can go. Obviously the light comes out and then reflects back. The further apart they are, 
the less well it's going to work. Um, and if they're very far apart, it may it may detect that, but it won't detect when it's really close. And of course, it, it's going to be the, the underneath of a train. I think they're going to need to be quite close together. But anyway, I'll try with the sleeper spacing. Uh, see here we go. Now I'll tell you a little trick. When I've uh, I've learned when I when I drill through my cork here, uh, and I get this problem when I'm drilling pilot holes for pins to hold the track in place when I do it. Because I've put copy decks on, and copy decks is a sort of uh, it's a latex adhesive, and it'll wrap around the drill bit grip, and then it will then start sucking in all the copy decks from all around, uh, which is no good. So what I do is I do half a turn and then go back again. So I don't keep pulling on the thread of copied X, if you see what I mean. Um, and that way it doesn't do so much damage. Otherwise I end up with a whole area where all the glue has been pulled off. Now we know we need um, at least a five millimeter hole because that's the size of these. Let me have a look. Maybe that's about right. So I'll widen this out to five millimeters. Now I think that's too large for the gap between the sleepers. So I will drill carefully and hopefully I can just take a bit off from each of the sleepers without actually trashing the track. Although I think trashing the track is probably quite likely. I just realized I probably didn't quite explain. Um, I've taken one of these detectors and removed the infrared LED and the photodiode and put them on wires. I probably haven't shown you that yet. Uh, so that's how they come in the packet. Obviously, that's a fixed spacing. Um, and I think I've realized that uh, I need a bit more flexibility to be able to mount them the way I want. Also, underneath, you know, I don't want this sticking out you know, under my, my thing, I want to be able to attach it. Uh, so I can do this, I can attach the uh, circuit board and then poke these up through the holes um, in, in just the right way. Um, it's a bit boring him to do that, it's quite a lot of work, desoldering and you know, I'm no good at soldering and you've got to insulate the joints. So let's have a look. Wow. Well, that's made a bit of a mess of the track. Um, it's actually picked up this end and moved it off the adhesive, so that's no good. Um, yeah, so I've got two holes, um, but I've also taken a bit out of the side of each sleeper. I mean, that's not the end of the world. I'm sure with a bit of ballasting around and, and so on, I'm sure that would hide quite nicely. Um, but it's not perfect. Anyway, let's see if we can get the uh, see if we can get the LEDs shoved through the holes. I suppose it doesn't really matter which one goes where. Okay, they fit quite snugly, um, but they, they only go that far. Okay, and they're sort of beneath. They're below the level. Um, let me show you there. So they're going through about like that. So it's a couple of millimeters beneath the um, beneath the sleepers. So maybe that's maybe that's good. Maybe that's what we need. 
Um, what I'll do then, uh, hold on, let me turn it all around. If I mount it that way, then uh, I can plug it in and we can see the, the indicators as to whether it's detecting or not. I've, I've managed to find a way of putting this connector on the end of this piece of wire, um, but that's a different video. So we'll come back to that another time. So it's voltage this side and uh, output this side. So the output's the white, voltage is the red. And we'll see ground's the black. So I'll put that on, that's good. Now I'll just turn this on. Um, and there you go, you can see the LED shining. I'll turn it off. There you go, and that goes out. So that's good. You can see the LED shining. And if I approach with my hand, ah, it's disappointing. Nothing gets detected at all. So, tell you what, we'll just take it out of the track first and make sure it's actually working. So, there we go. If I, so with no track, if I put my hand nearby, it does detect it, so that's good. But if I put it in the track, bear in mind, obviously the human eye can't see the infrared, but you can on the, you can there. Okay, so that's uh, that's not detecting it, but I might I might be able to adjust it a little bit uh, by tweaking this potentiometer. <laughs> so if I just put my hand there, put my hand there. If I just turn this one way or the other, let's see if we can get to a point where it. There we go. All right. So that seems to work. That's the telephone. Right, I'm off the phone now. Sorry about that. Okay, well, I think we'd, we're doing quite well here. So we've got this... Uh, we've got this slightly properly adjusted. Um, it can certainly detect my hand. Um, what it can't do, and that's not working. Yeah, if I put my hand actually on the track, it doesn't pick it up. There does need to be a gap. So, here's the test. Um, it's a loco. So this is my beloved Duchess, Duchess of Sutherland. Um, this is the first train I bought. I've only got two. Um, and uh, I lovingly tried to get it running on DCC. Um, there's a video on that. I'll put a card up so you can see me trying to convert this. Um, I put pickups in the uh, in the tender, although I think there are probably two um, pickups in the tender, probably too tight. There you go, and you can see I've put some wires across, wired in a, um, a, a decoder and uh, and fitted a digi hat as well, because this is an old, uh, old loco to a conversion. Anyway, I'll put it on the track and then we'll see what happens when we drive it over the detector. Um, right, here we go. And nothing happens. Now, I, I sort of expected that. And I think the reason nothing happens is because uh, the underside of this loco is black. Now, if it was white, we might have more luck. So I think what I'm going to do 
is I am going to paint the underside of this white or some of it. But actually I'm not um, because I'll do that once I know that's the solution. Um, I did go and buy myself just this, this little chassis. This is like a, what's it called? Grain hopper chassis. Don't quite know why you can buy this uh, and nothing else. But I bought this in order to uh, mount a camera on it one day. Um, but I don't, don't care about this so much. And actually what I can do is I can put a bit of white plastic card across the gap. Okay. The problem now is it's on all the time. And that does just about work. So I think the principle's right. It needs some adjusting. Now, the first thing is that these, uh, uh, the detector and the diode don't come all the way through the track. Um, and I think I can probably get them a little bit further through if I drill a slightly larger hole on the back. And the reason is these diodes have a little lip and it's basically catching on the lip there. So I'll give it another drill and see if I can get a little bit further through and that might help. So this is a six mil drill. The original or the, the hole I was using was five mil, which is the size of the uh, of the diodes and so on. So if I put that one in that's, in, that's the five mil hole, it stops there. If I put this one in, that just, there you go, that's gone sort of a bit further through. See if you can see that. So it's sort of protruding the surface of the cork, but it's not quite beyond the uh, top of the sleepers. I think that's sort of what I want is to get it so the top of the component is at the same level as the top of the sleepers. I think I just need to experiment a whole load with this, which is why I've got this bit of test track. So I think getting the getting the components all the way through the hole is definitely a good thing. There we go. And that doesn't have any trouble at all detecting that. Okay. So let's have a go with the Duchess. Put it over, it's not detecting it at all. So, I think what I'm going to do is um, paint this underside bit white. Okay, so I spared you all the drama of taking the screws out, um, but anyway, I've, I've removed this piece um, so I can paint this. Um, away from the rest of the logo, so I won't get paint everywhere. And when the paint's dry, I'll put it back and we'll give it another test.
Okay, so it's the next morning, um, and here is that uh, piece of plastic I was painting. It's got a bit of white on it. It's not perfectly painted, but I suppose it just needs to reflect the light. It doesn't need to be perfect. So I did, I did give this a little file before uh, I painted it. The um, I bought it second hand, and there was a loads of sort of scuffs along here. I think where someone had been shoving a screwdriver down the side next to the wheels for whatever reason. I don't know why they're doing doing that. Never mind. That's what happens when you buy things on eBay. You don't quite know where they've been and who's been doing what with them. Um, I don't have one of those fancy cradles, um, but actually, if I just turn the box that it comes in upside down, that's a reasonable start. Okay, so I'm all set up for another test. Um, so I've got my piece of track here, the sensor's just here. I've just raised it on a couple of reels. If I just turn the power on, you may be able to see the infrared LED come on. Uh, if you saw that. Um, I can't see it myself, but it may come on through on the camera. So there's the power uh, indicator on the detector circuit. And there's another one, there's another LED just there. It'll come on if uh, if it detects the presence of the train. So I'll just push it over. It's not come on yet, but that's under the uh, front wheels where there's no white underbelly. If I keep going, well, and there we go. So the white bit's gone over the detector, and it's detected the presence of the train. That's brilliant. That works just the way I want it to. There's one more thing I need to do, which is to try and use those smaller components uh, that'll fit a bit better between the between the sleepers. Um, just over here, I've drilled a couple of holes already uh, to accommodate them. So what I'll do is I'll I'll um, rip up another one of these detector circuits and put those uh, other components in. Now, I don't know that they're necessary, uh, necessarily a like-for-like -like replacement. I believe they are. They're the same sort of thing, just a bit smaller. Um, and they emit and detect the same wavelength of light. Um, they sort of came together in a pack, so hopefully that'll work. Um, but there's no way of knowing until I try it. So I'll, uh, I'll stick the, them in this hole and then give it another go. Okay, I've had to cut the details, otherwise we'd never get anything done. Um, but I've removed the uh, the two diodes, um, and I've replaced them with these pin connectors. Um, and uh, and then I'll put some uh, uh, some connectors on uh, the end of the new diode, so I can plug them in and unplug them easily. Um, I'll be talking about these connectors in another video, um, but uh, that's not for now. Okay, so I've got one of these. Uh, Got one of these uh, three millimeter diodes LEDs. Um, so you can't see it without looking really close, but just on this side, uh, the casing's got a sort of flat edge, and you can see that this leg is a bit shorter. This leg is a bit shorter. Um, so the shorter leg with the flat side that's the negative, that's the cathode, the other side is the anode. So I'll attach a a black and a red wire accordingly. There we go, I'm quite happy with that. 
Mm, no, I'm not. Okay, and now some heat shrink. So I think this is going to take a long time if I do this for all these uh, all these components. So I want to get them nicely installed. So again, this is just the LED. I've got to do the photo diode as well to go, to go with it. Okay, so as, as you can see, oops, I'll do it down there. Um, so I can now attach the LED and detach it using this connector. So I'll just do the same thing um, for the uh, for the photo diode now as well. Okay, so as you can see here, I've wired up both the uh, the infrared LED and the photo diode um, and clip them on. So I can just attach some power and see if it works or not. There's the power connector. And if I turn it on, first thing is, is the LED working? And I can see looking through the camera that it is, so that's good. Um, and then obviously we've got the, the power light and the indicator light. Um, so if I just... The hat. There you go. That's brilliant. So I can swap out the five mil components for the three mil components, and it still works. So I'll see if I can embed these in the track. Okay, so I've managed to embed uh, these components in the track um, in adjacent sleepers, and they fit almost perfectly between. There's a slight nick out of one of the sleepers, but. Uh, it's uh, it's a lot more subtle than uh, with the five mil components. Uh, there you go. You see, we've got power, but no indication. And if I move the loco over, there you go. It's uh, it's, it's detected the white underbody of the locomotive, no problem. Interesting. It did flash just a little bit when the pony went over. There you go. So. Uh, but with the white underbody, uh, it's no problem. So that's brilliant. I'm really pleased with that. Um, and I think I can just modify all these detectors and embed them in the uh, in the track. And it'll be no problem. Okay, so I set up a test rig. Uh, I'll be able to show you around it. Um, so over here, we've got our piece of test track. Um, and you can see the uh, the LED the infrared LED is on already. There's the train on the track waiting, and there's the control circuit. Um, and you can see at the moment uh, it's powered on, but it's not indicating. And if I put my hand over, there we go, it detects my hand. So that's all good. Now there's a cable coming out from there. Um, it goes into this connector block. Um, so. Here we've got uh, red for 5 volts, black for 0 volts, and that's going off to power the device. Um, but also the 5 volt feed, that is going into the common of the DigiKeys DR4088 Opto, Optical Isolated Detection, it says, whatever that means. Um, and the white cable, which is coming from uh, the detection circuit, that goes into port number one. So there's obviously 18 ports on this, so this can provide uh, 80 detection for 18 different, uh, different um, uh, infrared detectors or whatever. And I believe what it's detecting is a, vo uh, a voltage difference between these two. So at the moment, uh, this line is at 5 volts. So it won't be detecting anything. But when I put my hand over there, oops, let me show you. When I put my hand over there, uh, this will drop to 0 volts. That will create a, a voltage difference, which this 
device will detect. And it'll send a signal down the S88 uh, network. Now, it, I've connected it along this blue uh, network cable into uh, the next uh, DR4088. This is the current sensing version that I use for block detection um, on blocks of track. So it goes in there and then out um, and across to the other frame. Let me show you. into this which is another dr4088 uh, current sensing version but this has also got the loco net so this is the s88 network coming in here but then it also hooks into my loco net so it can then send a signal over the loco net uh, back to the controller um, and also here Oops, buried in here. This is my PR4, which provides a connection via the USB. Here's the USB cable plugged into my panel. And that is connected to my computer. So whenever I put my hand or a train, oops, there we go, over there. Um, that will detect it, send a signal all the way down da -da 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 -da, through the various devices into eventually loco net up the USB cable into the computer. And we'll have a look at the computer in a moment. So I'll put uh, I'll put the computer up on a shared screen. OK, so the first thing uh, I want to show you here is I've got Digimon uh, up on the screen. Uh, this just monitors what's going over the loco net. Um, and if I I put my hand over the sensor. You'll see when I when it comes on and when it goes off, uh, it sends some information over the loco net. So that's a really good start. Um, that suggests that uh, there there is actually some some data being sent. So the next thing to show you here, um, I've got a train controller running. You'll see this is an, an outline of my layout. Um, and here I've got my staging yard tracks. If we have a look at staging yard eight, uh, staging track eight. So I've configured it up uh, so that this will be um, the, uh, the track that's uh, got the indicator on it. I'll show you that. So if I go to the block editor, um, and you can see here there's an indicator. This red arrow um, means that it's a, a brake indicator, a, a, a stop indicator. Um, so the idea is uh, that uh, when this indicator uh, is triggered, um, that's a signal for the train to actually stop in this block. So I can position it uh, there towards the end of the block and say I want, want, want the train to stop when it gets there. Um, if I go to the properties of the indicator, then you can see it's configured up uh, for loco net, uh, plane number, and the number is number 33. Uh, now the reason for that is this is the third DR4088 device uh, in the system. So the first one is addresses 1 to 16. The second is 17 to 32. And then this one is 33 to 48. Um, and I wired in uh, my uh, feedback uh, signal wire uh, to position number one. So uh, position number one on this device means loco net address 33 and you can see just here um, I've got a little it's got a little test indicator so if you want to test to see if it's actually working um, we keep an eye on that if I put my hand over the device over the sensor you can see when I put my hand over not only does this light light up but also the light on the, the test light on the screen uh, lights up so that's brilliant so that means it's working um, and if I push the train across there we go you can see the lights come on there and also the indicator on the software has come on so that's what we want we want to be able to see if the train uh, is in that position on the track so if we say okay to all of that 
and then go to uh, take it out of edit mode into into run mode uh, you'll see at the moment that uh, block uh, is not indicating as anything there but if i now move the train uh, over the sensor it goes red to indicate that there is a, now a train on that block so that's brilliant that's uh, everything working so to say that I'm thrilled would be a bit of an understatement. Um, I'm really pleased to have uh, reached this stage. Um, I can do my optical detection. I can do my current sensing detection for detecting on blocks. Um, I understand how that all works and I can really get on and start making some progress now. Um, I've got to install a, a DC power supply, um, DC power bus, 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.5 volt all across the layout. Um, I can lay the track on my staging yard. I know how to do that. I can install my infrared sensor um, detection stuff in the staging yard. I know how to do that. I can install my current sensing block detection on the staging yard. I know how to do that as well. So I'm going to start making some real progress. I think the next, uh, uh, the next few videos are going to be a few uh, technical details of some of the skills I've learned to do this. I want to talk about the DC power supply. Um, I want to talk about the, uh, some of the connectors that I'm using um, and, uh, and, and then we'll probably have a bit of a layout update uh, and I'll show you some of the track that I'm laying um, and see if we can get a train to run uh, with any luck through the staging yard and then eventually complete the circuit. Um, so I look forward to, uh, to seeing you then.